This oral history interview of August Gus Bogina, former member of the, both the Kansas House of Representatives and the Kansas Senate is being conducted under the sponsorship of the Kansas Oral History Project Incorporated, a nonprofit corporation created for the purpose of establishing an archive of oral histories of Kansas state legislators who served prior to the year 2000. These interviews are funded in part by a grant from the Kansas Humanities Council. Professor Ed Flingey of Wichita State University is conducting this interview at the Kansas State House in Topeka, Kansas on February 16th, 2018. Audio and video services are being provided by the Chapman Center for Rural Studies at Kansas State University under the direction of Tom Parrish. Mr. Begina, originally from Shawnee, Kansas, and now retired, worked as a consulting engineer during his career. He graduated from Kansas State University with a degree in engineering. He was first elected to the Kansas House of Representatives in 1974 and re-elected to two additional terms, serving from 1975 through 1980. In 1980, he was elected to the Kansas Senate and re-elected to four additional terms. He served as chair of the Senate Ways and Means Committee for 11 sessions. I know you were from Johnson County, but... Uh, Not originally, but... Originally, where did you come from? Crawford County. Crawford County. I was born and raised nine miles north and two miles west of Pittsburgh, on a farm, or two miles west of the town of Arma, A-R-M-A. Went to grade school there in uh, country grade school. There were eight members in my eighth grade class, and which means it's a country school. And then I went to Arma High School. It's now consolidated with several other uh, high schools in, in, in that area. So you're from a farm family? Yes. My dad was a coal miner and a farmer. Oh, okay. A coal miner in the wintertime when there was no farm work and a farmer during farm season. Uh, and I imagine the coal mining was a declining industry it, at that time. Well, it, it, he worked in the, what they call deep mines. We call it, they were, my recollection, 250 feet deep thereabouts. There was a coal seam at that, at that depth down in that area. And then later they did the strip mining, which is a coal seam that was about 90 feet deep with the big, big shovels that turned over the earth and left the big scars and everything down there. That area. Now, was this a political family? Did your no, not really. Uh, I came political, so to speak, by happenstance. In, in uh, 1970s, I was chairman of the Lenexa area chamber of commerce, and there were several of us presidents of the chambers who had lunch together once a month or so, uh, periodically anyway, and we were not satisfied with our representation, so we decided we must find someone to run. So we tried and never so on so well, we couldn't find anybody who wanted to do it, so they, we decided one of us must do it. And since I was precinct committee when, and, uh, chairman of the city precinct committees there. They decided that I was probably the most political and I should run. I, I didn't particularly want to, I, but I didn't think much of it, but then I really was not politically involved up to that point in time. I didn't know what it involved and so on. If I'd have known, maybe I wouldn't have done it. But anyway, uh, I did, and I ran in the primary against the incumbent in one, and then I had a, a, a Democrat opponent who was a 
politics. Uh, he was a representative, uh, but he was redistricted out of it, there, so he was out of office for two years and decided to run again. And so, and I won that race also. So, uh, I that was my first first election. It was November the fifth, nineteen seventy four. Was the election day. Now it's usually challenging to take on an incumbent. How? Uh, it, 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 well, it, it, I was a novice, of course. And at that point in time, we didn't know. We, uh, the people who worked with me, uh, we were all novices. And yes, it. Uh, I, I realize now that it was it, it was challenging. But at the time, we didn't think too much of it. We just said one of us has to we must do it. So we did it. How long had you been in Johnson County uh, at that time? I moved to Johnson County in 1954. So I was there 20 years. Okay. And I started business, my, my business, in uh, July 1, 1962. So I was a cons consulting engineering uh, at that time, from 1962, in Johnson County. And uh, uh, I became pretty well, I say, versed in, in, in the county, because I was in the Chamber of Commerce, and I was in Rotary, and I don't know, quite a few things. And when you're in business, you need to do those things. And I served as city engineer for the city of Mission Fairway. Um, the next uh, Harrisonville was uh, on a retainer basis, not full time. It was on a retainer. I attended their, their meetings. And Bennett, Governor Bennett, was mayor of Prairie Village. And I was, and I, so I got to know the Governor Bennett before he became governor. And we as, as Mayor Bennett there. And so I, I, I moved around in those circles, so, so to speak. And so and really, taking on an incumbent is, yes, very challenging. Now, was your practice, engineering practice, kind of a one-person shop? or were it, it started out in, 19, uh, in 1962, of me and one person. By 74, oh, we probably had 10, 15. Oh, really? Because I, I, I built a new office in 1969, and uh, it... We, we, we ended up, or well, not ended up, but at one time we had 40 some employees. But I'd say back in 74, we probably had 15, 20, probably, yes. Did you go directly from getting your degree to Johnson County? No. Uh, I graduated in January 1950, and I started work for the Department of Interior, a geological survey. And uh, we at that time, my wife and I, we, moved, we traveled quite a bit. They sent us north in the summer and south in the winter, supposedly. Except my first assignment was in northern Nebraska. They sent me south, sent us south to Oberlin, Kansas. And that was not very far south, because I recall <laughs> when they was 20 below zero, we were trying to work outdoors that way. So uh, for the first, then we moved to Johnson County in 1954, and I, uh, I I moved there to take a job on the Kansas building the Kansas Turnpike. I was project engineer for a section of the Turnpike that is through Lawrence. So we started uh, east of Lawrence, well before we get to the rest area there, and then all the way through Lawrence into the Car River to a point about four miles west of Lawrence. And that included the interchange down to uh, 6th Street, 6th and Iowa now. And uh, the, uh, at the original design, there was only the one, the one interchange, which is now called West Lawrence. And I designed what was then the East Lawrence interchange. That was one of my first tasks there in the office. So I designed that. Then they sent me out to the field to manage the construction and the staking and the engineering and everything on that section. So I, I was out there uh, 54, four years 
We finished in about 58, so about four years on the turnpike. That's a big project at the age yes, of 30. Was. Well, so. the, the turnpike at that time, they had a general consultant, which was an engineering firm, and then they had sections, and, and they, uh -huh. they did that in order to speed up the progress. And so we that was our section, and we tied into an engineering firm on the east side and one on the west side, and we, we worked together all, all together. And, uh, I, I was in the field and managed the inspectors to construction, the staking, and everything, and the Carl River Bridge, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that was in, in the 50s, and we well, was what done. We drove the turnpike to the grand opening down in Wichita in 1958. Wow. Uh, did you then, was that it when you went to Johnson? County. No, I was in Johnson County then. Oh, so you were living. I, I, I was, we, we moved, when, when I left the um, uh, Geological Survey, we moved to Johnson County and went to work at this consulting firm yeah. in Merriam, Kansas, in Johnson County. And uh, after the turnpike, the consultant didn't have anything else for, for me to do. So I went to work for the Corps of Engineers to Kansas City District there. And then I started my business in July of 1962. Yeah. So... But I left it, we were in Johnson County from 1954. I've been in John, Johnson County from 1954 to 1996 when I moved to Topeka. Okay. Now, you said you were part of a group that was not satisfied. Yes. And what, what was the motivation? I mean, well, exactly we, was. Uh, I don't. One thing I, I remember, he introduced a bill that put a a a, a fee on fire hydrants that we had to have, <laughs> and that we thought that was a ridiculous idea, and uh, that. That was the crowning blow that we did. But we, we just weren't satisfied with him. And uh, when, I, uh, when I won the primary in August, he resigned unbeknownst to me. He sent a letter to Governor Docking resigning. And Governor Docking uh, gave him a position in the Department of Revenue. He was an accountant. He gave him a position in the Department of, Re of Revenue there for, for resigning. And I, I could have been appointed in August to, to serve out the rest of his term, but we didn't know until I was sworn in that that he had resigned immediately after the 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 August primary. But anyway, that's hey, Ed, real quick. Sorry, um, if you could scoot back even just like three inches, it's just scoot paper, back. Paper sticking up. Oh, I'm on sorry. Again. It's okay. Um, I just make it easier. <laughs> I mean, just later on, probably. We're good otherwise. Sorry. All right. Should be good. Thank you. Um, That's my background. <laughs> well, uh, it fills in uh, some time there before yes. Topeka. And um, uh, you started in 75. Yes. And it, I think, may have served uh, one term and then were placed on Ways and Means Committee. I would, no, I served two terms. Two terms? Two okay. terms. I went to the House Ways and Means Committee in <clears throat> 1979, 79 and 80, and, uh, and I was two years, and the uh, speaker then was Hayden, but my Governor Hayden was speaker, not speaker, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, and uh, when the lady was speaker of the House at that time. Yeah, I. I served in the majority party uh, in, in, for two years, and Pete McGill was speaker. Then in minority party, and Carlin, then Speaker Carlin, then later Governor Carlin was speaker. And then back to the south side of the, the, the chamber uh, when, when the lady became speaker, and I kind of facetiously say, that's enough, move back and forth, I'm going to go to the Senate. So I ran for the Senate, and the incumbent was a Democrat, and I beat him. I did not have a primary, 
that I, I won, the, won the general election and I was placed on the Senate Ways and Means Committee. Uh, chairman was uh, Paul Hess, their chairman. Cool. chairman. Uh, anyway, we smile. <laughs> anyway, uh, he was chairman then. Uh, Talkington, Senator Talkington became president and he, through the process, appointed me chairman of the Ways and Means Committee and I served in that position until Governor Graves appointed me as chairman of the Board of Tax Appeals and I resigned, which was a hard thing to do because I liked the Senate and I, I liked the process, but in reality, after so many years, you build up some baggage. And I had built up some baggage, especially with the unions, that uh, they didn't like me and uh, uh, didn't like my politics, I guess I'll put it that way. And uh, so I decided that I thought about it, but it was hard to do because I, I really enjoyed the camaraderie and the, everything that goes with the political process and the Senate especially. And so I, I did resign and I served four years as chairman of the Board of Tax Appeals. And then I'm, whenever my turn was up, Governor Graves was, going, was not going to reappoint me, so I retired. And I've been, quote, retired ever since. So now I did in the early 2000s, I did consulting work, engineering work, primarily in Wyandotte County, did work for uh, um, Workshower Hathaway, there in uh, Wyandotte County, he built, they, they, they built, Buffett or they built a retirement village, retirement subdivision of duplexes, and I was the project engineer, served as project engineer on that particular uh, project, and I did several other engineering works consulting is on an individual basis, did not do any planning because I did not have the capacity, or I did some capacity, but really not much. So I, I, I did some consulting work, but prime, the, my biggest job was with Berkshire Hathaway. It's kind of unusual. They, they, they interviewed me and they said, um, what would your fee be? And the controller <laughs> marked it down. And I, I better add some more to it, so that's that. Told him price, fine, okay. I hope I should have. <laughs> should have should <laughs> My added, calculations. Should have, should have added a little bit more. No, I came out fine. But I mean, they, not a problem. That, that was it. Well, I'll, I'm sorry. I, I maybe got Well, sidetracked. no, that's fine. Uh, the I want to go back. Okay. You obviously express an interest in ways and means. Well, that, you must have said that to Wendell Lady. I think he would have been the yeah, first. We, back uh, in my beginning, in, 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 I, uh, I was kind of a loner, and I didn't have much to do. I didn't go to any, many of the uh, receptions or things like that. So I spent my nights studying the budget, and I think I knew the budget very well after four or five or several years there. And uh, when the lady then decided to or agree, or maybe I asked, I don't remember. No, I think he, he, he offered that to me. And uh, I, I said, yes, I'd like to do that. And then I kept studying the budget. But I, I think I was pretty well versed in most of the aspects of the, of the budget there. So, Where did uh, this interest come from? Was it uh, well, first the of all, engineering the, background? The engineering is math, I mean, it, it primarily. And so I, I like numbers, so I, I, I still do. So I, I think that's probably part of the genesis. And the other one was, I was up here, uh, didn't have much, anything else to do. Uh, what, what, would, what would be interesting and what could I do and uh, one of the things I was, I was uh, on the redistricting of our area in 1979, I guess, 78 or 79, when, when, when the lady had juggling numbers and there was a representative Heinemann that was in our office that worked uh, with us there. And 
there were three of us in that office, the house office, that had districts that were overpopulated, I guess is the best way to put it. And I think we should have had probably six votes instead of three based on numbers. But anyway, I worked on those numbers very diligently on it for our area, the area that was assigned to me, and uh, Johnson County primarily. And uh, I, I manipulated, uh, not manipulated, juggled those numbers to, to get a balance that we needed. And that was a challenge to me. And, and, and numbers have always been a challenge. And I guess probably somewhat because of the calculus and the di differential equations and all that stuff that engineers have to take, I guess that probably the cause, it might be, you might say, of that interest in ways and means. I, I wanted to see how it went together, and why it went together, and then work on it there. Were you more interested in the taxing side or the spending side? Spending side. Spending. No, you were on the spending committee. Yes, I, 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 I was more interested in, in, in the spending side, to balancing the budget, to, and trying to equalize and properly fund agencies. I, I was always my intent to properly fund them uh, and not overfund them or not underfund them, but try to properly. And that's kind of difficult to do to find a balance in there, but that's one of the reasons that I, I worked and studied, studied the budget. And it, when I was Senate chairman, or chairman of Senate Ways Meets Me, before session, generally in December, I would come up here to Topeka and I would have staff come in and I would go over to every budget that, that, we, that we had, try to understand what what and why. And then I, I tried to create a, a guide that we would work towards during the session. And uh, uh, you call it whatever it was, a plan, it was, wasn't a plan, it was kind of a goal to work towards. And I, I did that, uh, maybe not the first couple of years, but I, in general, uh, most years, to try to uh, massage and, and get the budget to come out in a balanced form and adequately fund most agencies. Now, many people might not believe that I have funded them adequately or that I had, had tried to fund them in my own way adequately, but I did. Now, I, I can understand the connection of engineering and numbers and budget figures, but being a uh, chair of ways and means requires some political skill. Well, where did uh, that come from? Well, that, where that came from, uh, Ross Doyen was president of the, of the Senate. And uh, he made it be known that he was not going to run for president again. So you know, Bob, Bob Talkington, President Talkington, uh, started campaigning for the position. And I told him I would run, I, I committed to him to, to run, to <clears throat> vote for him for president. And after I did that a while, I don't remember how long later, uh, Doyen, Ross Doyen called me up and said he was going to run for president again. And I said, Ross, I, I've already committed to, to talk. He said, yeah, but you, and no, I, I don't do that. When I commit, I commit. And so, unless I, unless, well, if I change my mind, I can go tell you about it. But I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't just knife you in the back, so to speak. I told him, Ross, I can't do that. I, I committed to, to Bob, Bob talking to him, and I'm going to do that. But anyway, he, through that connection, he appointed me chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. There were a couple others that wanted it pretty bad, and there was a lot of surprise when I was appointed. That now I had served four years in the Senate for Ways and Means as a committee member, and two in the House. So I had six years experience in that regard when, when President Tarkington appointed me chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. Then I, Governor, and that, and then the rest from there on, I served until I resigned. So you were on the Talkington team? Yes, I was. Yeah. 
Yes. Was it a close vote or did Ross? I have out? no idea. I, 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 oh, as far as the vote, he was pretty close for, as far as uh, yeah. talking to the Doyen. Yes, he was. Maybe one or two votes. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know, but Ross, uh, Ross he was, he was disgusted. He said, my wife left me, and now nobody's voting for me. And he said she took all my furniture and everything. And I, and I, and this, this, so I, I, and, I, and I, I Doyen, felt sorry for him, but <laughs> Doyen had probably put you on the committee originally. Had yes, it? I think so. So yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, he put me on the committee. Yes, yeah. but not as chairman. Right. No, Paul Hess was, was, was chairman right. there, but uh, no, yes, he, he 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 put me on the on the committee. As I was. But I and I hated to do that to him, but I because I, I liked him. I got along with him fine. A lot of people didn't, but I I did, and I. But when I commit, that that was it. Uh, I uh, had a conversation with Mike Hayden before oh. our interview, and uh, he reminded me that uh, Paul Hess was between. Uh, uh, Went went winners, winners, WW1 and and, uh, yeah. and your chairmanship, and as I thought about it, that was a strange combination, <laughs> Ross Doyen and Paul Hess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, Doyen would have had to have named Paul Hess chair yes. of that committee. Because, let's see, uh, uh, the d d district judge was president of the uh, Senate uh, before uh, I man, know. Man, uh, Richard Rogers. Yeah. Then, then he became judge, and uh, uh, Ross then became president of the Senate. I was in the House then, but I, but, uh, but he, he he became. Well, and Bennett was became. Bennett was, was yeah was first, but then he became governor. So then Rogers be. Oh, you know, no, that's right. Then, then then Rogers went to the the federal court, then Doyen came in, and then talk and. Sorry, and but but Burke. Um, did you you talked about this a little bit? Um, did you have a philosophy about? I mean, you were uh, chair of that committee probably longer than anybody in the history of our state. I don't know. If that, I, I mean, certainly, I, 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 I was there a long time. Yes. Um, did you, what was your philosophy? Well, I, uh, philosophy was to determine the need. What I did, did determine was a need and try to fund it adequately. And, uh, it, you know, that's probably, it's a matter of perspective. I got, I'd say my personal, somebody else may have a different idea as to what the need really is. And, but my philosophy was try to, to serve the needs, and whether, whether it be for Medicare or whether it be for the transportation, you know, it, it, they're, they're all part of government. They're, and, and uh, uh, you know, I've, I've been termed as being heartless and cruel and mean and so on and so forth, but someone has to make those hard decisions. And one of the things I always said uh, that uh, I, at the time, said I did not have an ego. But yes, I had an ego. <laughs> I believe that anyone that asks someone to vote for them or give them campaign funds, money, their hard-earned dollars, had, must have an ego or you can't do it. And there's 165 egos up here. <laughs> and there must be a way to massage those 165 egos in order to come out with a compromise that works. And that's not always easy. And so I tried to determine the needs, what I felt were the needs, and of course I used staff. I mean, I, I relied on staff uh, very much so, but I used my own judgment as much as, much as it possible too. And, uh, then, then to try to get, you don't need 165, all you need is a majority, get a majority of those to agree with you, it's not easy. And over the years, it, it, it got pretty difficult. Sometimes. What about within your committee? Did you ever have committee uh, eruptions? 
Eh, well, uh, no, I don't, well, yes, I probably did. Uh, one time I remember, uh, I, I don't remember what the issue was, but somebody made a motion on a, a bill we were working on that I thought was wrong. And I called for the vote. I thought it would be defeated. But the vote was, I asked my aide, what was, what's the vote? She said it went, they approved it there. So I, so I, I joined the committee. And uh, Marty Hover, around the Capitol here, was a press fellow, he came up and he said, what happened to the vote? I said, it's still on the table. He said, well, you took the vote, but then you didn't call it. I said, no, I did not call it. He said, well, you can't do that. I said, yeah. well, I did, and I were adjourned. He said, you can't do that. I said, no, it, we are adjourned, and that's it. So we took a vote the next day, and it didn't pass. <laughs> Need I say more? Okay. Now, I ran on to a newspaper clipping that uh, I don't think I'd seen before. Uh, it described, and I'm not sure this is fair, it described you as gruff, a bulldog, obstinate, slams doors, snaps pencils. Yes. That can't possibly be true, can it? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, in, in committee, or I think it was conference committee with Representative Button, Bill Button, there, uh, he kept wanting to put packages. He said, I'll, I'll, here's a package I'll give you of, of different agencies. And I said, Mr. Chairman, we're talking about individual agencies. I, I want to talk about this one, that one. Not packages. I don't want packages. He kept assisting on packages, so I broke a pencil. I was, I was disgusted. Yes, I did. It was a wooden pencil, and I, I broke it there. Now, I was rough on it. And then another time, uh, it was Bill Button again, oh, he and I, oh boy. Anyway, um, another time I did leave the room and I slammed the door. Yeah, it rattled the glass pretty, pretty, pretty good there. And uh, uh, so, yes, I did do it. Now, gruff is a matter of opinion. I, <laughs> I, I probably it was at times, I had no question about it. Uh, they, they called me a bulldog when I was chairman of the, of the uh, post audit committee. In fact, they gave me after what I left. They gave me a little statue with a bulldog on it there, and a little black. <laughs> thing there. So I have that that hold me up there. But anyway, uh, it's uh, yeah. Was, yeah, I probably was rough. Was this a, ne a negotiating technique? Probably. Yes. <laughs> I I don't think I was normally gruff. You, you came back to the committee sooner or later. Oh yeah. Well, I, I, after I cooled off, I went in the office and cooled off a little bit. I came back in. Because they, they were all in there waiting for, you know, what's going on? Because I was chairman of the of the committee, and I didn't <laughs> adjourn it. I just left there. And uh, now, as far as the broken pencil, I, I just I sat there and just I guess I threw it in the wastebasket. I don't know, but I I, 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 I was filling with this with this pencil, and I got disgusted. I just I snapped it. Yes, I did do that. So, <laughs> were there particular issues that always would give you trouble? Oh. Uh, I remember one of them, George Teagarden was, was uh, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, and we were in the, in the veto session with the budget and private. The, the, the last issue left was the state salaries, salaries for state. And as I recall, we had a 2.5% increase, and the, um, not any, but the, uh, Union, the, the employees union, whatever it's called, uh, they had sent a some lady in from Ohio in their national headquarters to come down here and convince us, me, that we were, we were wrong. So uh, George T. Garden would not agree to this two and a half percent increase in overall state salaries. So uh, we left and we. We joined the meeting, and she caught me in the hall. This lady did, and she started reading me your riot act and so on. And I told her, "Lady, we're going to go back in there. You don't agree to that? It's going to be two percent when we go back in there." She said, "You can't do that." <laughs> I 
said, watch me. So we went back in, we made it 2%. We adjourned and she came out, she just ran upside. I said, next time it's one and a half. She didn't, did, she didn't take me on with that. She, she let it go with that. There, but anyway, so we ended up with two. There, we, they had two and a half if she had left me alone. But she didn't. So we ended up with 2%. But George Teagarden was, was, was uh, chairman of that. Uh, the Ways of Meats group. The other time there was most was uh, you know, the fellow who's now uh, Parks and Recreation. Uh, My, I hate not him. No, 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 no. But anyway, he was chairman of the Ways of Meats Committee, and I wanted to oh. start funding the unfunded liability, which they still have. Now we, we, it was. That unfunded liability was back there in the capers, unfunded liability. It's still, in fact, it's getting worse. And uh, I wanted to start funding it, and he did not. Uh, he's over, he's, he's secretary of the of Parks. I know he, I can't uh, come Anyway, he, he, was, he was chairman, and, I, and I'm, of course, I mean, Jerry, his, his group, they were, it was a Democrat leadership over here then. That's got nothing to do with it. But anyway, um, they they did not want to start funding that, that unfunded liability, which comes from the teachers union when when the school the old teachers retirement system was merged into capers, there was that unfunded liability for all those teachers. And it's still there. It has never been it's gotten worse, it keeps growing and I I think it's it's a, it's, a, it's a mistake. They need to they need to start attacking that. But anyway, that that was another frustration of mine that I wanted to to I can't think of the fellow's name. Nice guy. But another little tidbit. One session, Chairman Button and I, maybe this time I broke the pencil. I don't remember. Right immediately after that, I went to the KU Med Center for a minor surgery procedure, and I had gone through the procedure, and I was laying there in the recovery room, and the fellow over there, taking off his clothes, ready to put on the gown and everything, I said, that looks like Bill Button over there. And I said, my God, I've died and gone to hell. Because you know, after all the time that we, excuse me, I didn't mean, I, 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 all the frusty, frustration that we had there during the session, to, for him to, be there, but he was getting a procedure done of some kind. But Bill and I were good friends, but we we, we had some good You friends. ended up in the same hospital? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, you worked, I mean, you worked a budget from the legislative side. You had a number of governors that you had to deal with. Uh, uh, Bennett, Carlin, Hayden, Finney, Graves. Yes. yes. Um, uh, do you have any uh, recollection of working with those folks? Yes. My my best friend as governor was Governor Finney. Kind of amazing. But when she became governor, uh, her daughter Mary Halliday was was her chief of staff. They didn't know I existed. I mean, the first year. They, they totally ignored me. Second year, Mary came down one time and we visited and we, Governor Finney and I became friends. I mean, really good friends, besides being governor and, and, and senator, I mean, just a friend. And uh, uh, I, I believe she was, she was, as far as friendship, she was my best friend in, in, in the governorship. Governor Bennett, the, I was a freshman house member, so I really didn't have that much to do with Governor Bennett because I knew him when he was mayor, so I, I knew yeah, Bob, Bob and Governor Bennett. But uh, Governor Finney was my best friend in, in, in the governor, and uh, she was different. But it, it, uh, one time she had line item vetoed something, so I went down to her office and I said, Governor, I'm going to have to make a motion to override your veto. I just want to let you know. She said, you do what you have to do, I do what I want to do. She said, that's okay. So I made the motion, we did, we overrode her veto. I called her up again, she said, that's fine. So I went out of time, I 
did the same thing. I was going to, I was ready to make the motion. And the, the minority leader stands up and beats me to it, makes the motion. And so I called her, I said, that was Jerry Carr, you're my way. She said, I know, that's all right. There's an ag issue of some kind. So we overrode her veto many times. She thought it was right, she did it, no big deal. Then at the end of her, her session, she called me up. She said, can you come up? And I said, yes. So I went up there and there's Mary Holliday, the governor, Susan Seltzer, who was Secretary of Administration, and Gloria Timmer, who was Budget Director. And she said, I want to take a picture, I want to have a picture of you and your harem. I said, I, my harem. <laughs> so anyway, so he stand in, the photographer said, Governor, move over. She said, what do you want me to do, put my head on his shoulder? He said, yeah, be nice. So she did, <laughs> and he took the picture. <laughs> I have the picture, she sent me the picture and a letter. I have it framed, she sent a nice letter. And I have it, have it framed. So she, we, we, were, we were good friends. She was different, but I mean, we were good friends. There. And I'm maybe getting a little ahead of you, myself or yourself. My most memorable thing was in 1989, uh, April 1, April Fool's Day, I was in my workshop in Shawnee and my arm went numb there. So I, I filled up my, I smoked a pipe at that time, I filled up my pipe with tobacco, and I, I don't know, so I laid my pipe down, I went upstairs, so this was the basement, wife Nancy was there, and I said, I, I laid down on the floor, and I said, I think something's wrong. So she called Marvin, Marlon Ryan, who was the representative for KU, the University of Kansas, and he said, bring her in, bring him in to the, emergency room at the med center. So she wheeled me, drove me over there, took me up to the hospital, and after the test, they found out I had blockage. So they did uh, bypass surgery uh, April the 4th, I remember very well, 1989. Come veto session, 1989, there was the state water plan. Governor Hayden's pride and joy was deadlocked in the Senate. I'm in Johnson County. The doctor at that time said you could have go to office half days and so on. So I did, and I was in jeans and, and so on. Not, not dressed really, because I was just loafing around the office wasn't really doing anything, my engineering office. So I got a call from Z, who was the president's secretary. Anyway, we called her Z. She said uh, the um, highway patrolman's going to be there in five minutes to pick you up. I said, how are you me? She said, yes, we have a call in the Senate. And, and uh, your wife, Nancy, said that you could come in. Well, unbeknownst to me, the president called her up to the, my wife, she was working in the Senate there, called her up and said, do you think Gus can come in and vote? She said, oh, we'd love to. She, she said, uh, how will he vote? She said, I don't know. She probably will vote for it, but I don't know that. So here come the highway patrolman, five minutes. So we get in his car. The first thing I know, we come up to him around 87th Street, and there's Median Island. So he goes on the left-hand side of the island, turns on the siren, goes through the intersection and the red light. And I said, oh, oh. <laughs> we're going to have a ride. <laughs> so anyway, we are on the 435, and he gets on the radio. He says, have a gate open at the turnpike at the time the gates were to the west. Have a gate open. We're coming through there in five minutes. <laughs> I said, five minutes? He said, yes. Away we go. We go through the gate, to the, to the, he didn't see slow down. <laughs> through the gate, the telephone poles were going by like fence, like fence posts. And look at the speedometer and I could see 100. And I, I said, you have good tires on here? He said, well, they're new, but you know, they're a little bitter. <laughs> I said, that don't make me feel any better, you know. He said, well, you're the one that says we have to have low bitter. So, I, okay. I remember they had a Plymouth. This was the car. We go and in the Senate, there, President Burke said, they're at mile post such and such now, and we're at mile post such and such. And he called and said, have, have the south door open, and have an elevator. So the south door, and here's the, the cameras there, backing up as I go in, get on a cage elevator, go up and go in. And, and President explains they're voting on the state water plan, and 
Well, how would you vote? I vote aye. <laughs> Pass the state water plan. Then I was so tickled about it, happy that I first of all back into the, the chambers, and secondly that ride was exhilarating. Believe me, I mean, I I, I know 100 miles an hour is, is stupid, but I mean it, that was that was something, and I was excited. So I found a microphone, telling everybody about my nice ride here at 100 miles per hour. The press didn't like that. They said you endangered everybody on their highway. Where I was, I wasn't driving. I was riding. Anyway, I I, I wanted to put that in there. My ride that uh, that I had uh, in the uh, veto session of 1989. There, after my bypass surgery, there at the KU Med Center. So. But, they didn't take you back at 100. No, 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 no. I, I stayed for the rest of the veto session. Oh, so, but any, anyway, yeah, we had an apartment here, and, and uh, so. Well, you were also chair of Ways and Means during uh, uh, Carlin's last term. Yes. And Mike Hayden's Yes, term. yes. How were they? Uh, well, uh, I got along with them, with them fine. Governor Carlin, not too much. Uh, contact except once. Uh, I was working late at night and Governor Carlin called and said, can I come down? Said, yes, Governor, right, absolutely. So he came down to my office down on the first floor and he said, I have, have something to ask you. I said, okay. He said, we are leasing the state plane. The state. Queen, the state airplane, a, a, a Queen Air at that time. He said that we have the opportunity to buy it They're on a lease purchase deal. He said there's money in the budget for a le the lease. He said, uh, I'd like to ask you if you could change that, add some, add, add, add some money to it. I forgot how much. No, it was considering uh, not, not much, but some money to it and change it to lease purchase. So I said, well, yeah, I can do that, Governor. He said, well, I would, I said, my party, I don't think we'll like that. So he said, could you do that? I said, yes, I'll do that. So I changed it to lease purchase in the dollars. And when I explained the bill, I said, there's money in here for the plane. There sure was. I didn't, I didn't tell anybody the untruth. Nobody asked me anything more than that. So in essence, I bought an airplane and hid it in a bill, which I did. The governor asked me to do it, and I, I did it. So we purchased it, and I don't know what kind of plane they have now, but we went from Queen Air to King Air, and they may have something different now, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Don't have any idea, I haven't kept up. But I know that Governor Carlin asked me to buy the plane, so I did. Now, I don't remember any other contact with Governor Carter. Yeah, I had some, sure, but I mean, anything that was memorable to me, yeah. except my and the plane. You seemed to be in sync with Mike Hayden most of the time. Yes, I was, yes. Uh, in, in fact, in 1986, six, well, one, it, it, the Senate elections are in between the governor. Uh, Bill Morris and I, well, went to visit um, editors in small town newspapers. And I remember, I don't know, we read several of them, but one of them in Lincoln, Kansas. I've never been to Lincoln, yeah, I haven't been there since either. But Lincoln, Kansas, that was quaint and a beautiful little town. And we, we went to visit, we visited the editor there for Mike, for Governor Hayden, and try to get the, the editors to support and endorse the governor. The, uh, Mike, he was not governor then to endorse Hayden for governor. So, but Bill Morris and Bill Morris from Wichita, Senator Morris and I were the team, I guess you might call it, who were paired to do this tour. And I... Was this for highways or... Well, this was for the governorship too. Oh, for the for the governor's race. Well, I, I, I also there was uh, the, that highway 
uh, group. I was a member of that, that highway. I have the report that I saw on the Tornado in my cabinet there at, at, at home. There that we, the we, the committee, that, that group put together for the highway, the highway plan, state highway plan. Yeah. That, that was during Gaden's administration, though. That right. was not for his election. Where Governor, I mean, not, uh, Bill Morris and I were about for his election. Yeah, uh, I'd say what you mean. 96. Yeah. 96. So you were venturing out from Johnson County. Yeah, I did not have an opponent in, 90, in 84. What did I say in 96? 86. 86. I did not have an opponent in 84. Right. I, I had a free ride. There, so I guess they felt that I probably couldn't do much damage to my my <clears throat> campaign to, to go out and do that. So, and I don't know about Bill Morris, but anyway, uh, Bill and I did do some campaigning with editors for Mike Hayden for governor. Okay. Um, if you want to take a break at any time, I'll just say it. or have a swig of water, or, uh, just. I think I'll do that too <laughs> while we. I don't know. I, I, I may be getting off off here. Mm. We're covering the territory. <clears throat> um, you, after uh, Talkington, you had Bud Burke as president. Yes. Uh, I assume you had a pretty good relationship with Bud Burke. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> uh, You're both Johnson County. I, I understand it. State yeah, I would say pretty much, except uh, leadership-wise, and I, I go back to once again to Governor Finney. <coughs> um, it was the end of uh, end of Governor Finney's uh, term. And she had appointed Susan Seltzer as chairman of the of chairman member of the Kansas Corporation Commission, okay. and we had a Republican Senate caucus, and the leadership, Bud Burke et al., had said that they we, we should not consider the appointment because we would probably get a Republican governor and we could get a Republican Corporation Commission member. And I said, I didn't think that the Corporation Commission should be political. I thought Susan Selson was very capable, very qualified, and very able to be on the commission. And he disagreed and very, very strongly. We had a few words, and uh, I won. And uh, unbeknownst to me, my wife Nancy was out in the corridor waiting for me. And he went out there and just went up one side of her and down the other, chewed her up. She didn't know what to come. Something about not following leadership and so on and so forth. And, and so I am, um, I guess at that time, that particular moment, I had more power than the president had there. Because I, we, did, we did confirm Susan Seltzer. There, and uh, I think it was right, and uh, I was maybe not as political as some people thought I should be sometimes, but I felt what's best for the state and who's qualified should be the most, get the most concerned. So that's, uh, so I say we got, got along with Bud Burke? Yeah. Uh, going back some time, Bennett was elected to the Senate, and he became governor, so there was vacancy. And it was up to the precinct people to appoint the uh, new senator. Well, Bud Burke had just won re-election to the House. So he came before our precinct committee. I was chairman of the committee. He and his wife, Pat, then wife, Pat, and we agreed we would vote for him for Governor Bennett's seat in the Senate. We did, he became, he, and then my first uh, office was in the 
treasurer's vault down on the second floor. And in it was Bud Burke, the one thing, he was there one day, then he became a senator, and his replacement was there, and I don't remember his name, and Bob Fry, Representative Fry from Western Kansas. And uh, that we were in there the, for one year, I think, maybe two, I don't know. Then I uh, went, came, went in an office with uh, Bob Fry, and David Heinemann, myself, and I don't know if that was there. no, that was that was probably the, in in uh, se seventy eight and seventy nine. I'm guessing I here for Secretary Gloria Corona. There, ring a bell. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so yes, I knew Bud Burke a long time. Yes, I, I guess I voted for him to be a, our senator. Did I get along with him? Most of the time. I, he, quotes left me alone because very honestly, he didn't know anything about ways and means. There. <laughs> and so he, he said, whatever you want to do, you know, let, let, me, let me do it. So for four years, I, I, yes, I did. Well, I did pretty much when under talking to know, so he didn't, he really did not. Now, Ross Dorian was a member of the Ways and Means Committee when I was chairman there. So he, he but, but not talking to him, but Ross was. He was not vice chair either, he was just a member, as was the minority leader on, 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 on that committee. So we had pretty good leadership on that, that committee. You obviously focused, spent a lot of time on ways and means. During Carlin and Hayden, there was some, a lot of things going on outside. To some degree, touch ways and means, but mostly outside. Uh, were you pretty much in line with uh, Republican leadership during I those times? Pretty much in line. Yeah, may, maybe not hundreds. Sales tax increase. Uh, that, a couple of them. Highway plan. The highway plan. I was a member of that committee, and I felt as an engineer, I knew something about the construction of roads and so on. And I thought I had something to offer, so I asked to be on that committee. Yeah. And they did appoint me. There, I, 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 I guess I may be somewhat out of line, but I felt that since I was an engineer and I did completely familiar with highways because we I designed them. We did. I, I we had come, we worked for Kato. We, we did some work. So I uh, I felt I, I had something to offer. So I asked specifically to be on that committee. And they, I was appointed to it. There. And as far as the sales tax. Yeah, that was, I, I didn't quite approve, but I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, the gasoline tax, that was different. That was, we went up for 21 cents from 17. That was, uh, that was under talking to him, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there, there was, there, there were some issues. Now, I, I was also chairman of the Building Construction Committee, and, and that was probably pretty well, because I mean, I'm an engineer. I, maybe that was when I was in the house, but I was. I, was I went back there. and looked at that. That was created in um, '78. Okay, so that's the first time. Okay, so I. And I, I was wondering. I think if, I was chairman of that. I wondered lady, if but, you had anything to do with the creation of that committee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the. Uh, Tell me about that. Okay. What, what, uh, we were on, I guess it was Ways and Means Committee, we went over to the, they opened the court, court of the Judicial court Center. building over here. And uh, uh, the Sage of Osage, he was in the, in the house here, I forget his name, we used to call him Sage of Osage County. We went in there and we go in the, in the atrium and he said, my God, we could put a lot of hay in here. And I <laughs> felt, we have, look at the wasted space in there. It's beautiful, I'm not this way. But look at the wasted space, the heat, the cooling, the space. So I complained about it. And 
Uh, I don't know if that was a direct result of, of me being chairman of your Congress, whatever it was. Anyway, I, I agreed with, I can't think of his name, that I, that I would have held a lot of hay in you know, but in a, and actually, it, it is beautiful, I'm not disagreeing with it, but it is, in my opinion, a big waste of space. Yeah. And I said that we should not be having that much waste of space and paying for all that room that we're not using. And that may have caused the, precipitated the committee, and it probably, that he's a troublemaker, so he probably ought to make it that he put him over there. It could be, yes, it could be. Did, uh, were, did you see that committee accomplish things? Yes, I think we did, because the, the I think uh, the administration probably didn't like it, having to submit some of those things to us for review. And yes, we made some, we made some comments, you know, to, about some of them, and I think and a lot of them were changing, the university, the university buildings and so on and so forth, because it was quite a task, and I, I think that committee has gotten to be watered down and non-effective, but at one time we were effective there. So I, 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 I think, uh, I think, I think it, it served a purpose, yes. You, uh, you mentioned uh, post-audit, too, yes, uh, post were there Things you remember, but particularly about post audit that uh, no, not made really, a difference. No, not Except uh, we reviewed those audits very thoroughly, in my opinion, and I don't think that's being done now. And I point to the Dale Dennis issue a while back because that post audit committee should have taken care of that before it ever got to the press there. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's that's now, but uh, I, uh, I I don't remember an issue per se that we had, such as the hay bar and so on. Because uh, I do remember that, but uh, now I, I I don't remember. Um, but it was created for a purpose too. Uh, back when that was before my time, that the KU scandal, at uh, KU Med Center scandal, the architecture and so on and so forth, construction. And that, and that, uh, that's why the post audit was, was, it was issued at, and at one time, it was only <coughs> members of Ways and Means Committee originally. And somebody by the name of Brown was the, 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 the forgot what his Richard name. Brown. But anyway, um, that, that all was before my time. Are you, are you surprised that there's gubernatorial candidates calling for an independently elected auditor? Uh, no, but it, here again, it, it can be a good thing, and it cannot. It depends on, obviously, the personnel, if they're qualified and able, and if they do something with that audit. If you just put it on a shelf with another bound document, it's worthless, and it, you're spinning your wheels and you're doing nothing. So I would say it can be effective if they do it right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to jump back to Ways and Means okay. uh, and key off of a comment you made. Uh, you mentioned working closely with staff. Uh, what staff members do you remember uh, having? Oh, uh, it's been a long time ago. He was you mentioned Marlon Ryan. When Marlon Ryan, yes, it. he sticks in my mind. Uh, Carolyn Rampey, she was in education. She's in Wichita. That's in Wichita. Yeah. Last time I knew, I don't know. Uh, I got a card from her after Nancy's passing. Um, That's. But uh, the other thing, I, mean, I think we were the first, or maybe the only two people who married in the Senate chambers, Nancy and I, yeah. there. We were married in uh, December 5, 1988, which was the, the day that we had the uh, meeting of, 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 the, of the Senate, I mean, of the parties, the, the Senate and the, and the organization, 
the elected chairman, and so on and so forth. December 5, 1988, uh, Nancy, who worked in the Senate uh, there, but she happened to work for the Democrats at that time. She was a Democrat, I was a Republican, and uh, she was in working leadership, I was in leadership. <coughs> we were opposites all the way down the line. She was Protestant, I was Catholic <laughs> there, and uh, they say opposites attract, but anyway, we were elected to <coughs> Reverend Holloman, who passed away very recently, and uh, but that's funerals tomorrow. Um, so she uh, asked her if I'd like to get married, if she wished she could get married to the Senate. I said, well, I don't think we can do that. So she went to President Talkington. He said, I don't know why not. So we arranged it. And so we had the Senate chaplain that officiated at our wedding, and we were married on, in the Senate on December 5, 1988. And she recently passed away, but then so it was yeah. Um, I'm going to go a little different uh, okay. direction. Um, the 94 election oh, okay. was uh, near the end of your service. Well, uh, I, 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 95. I, I was served in the 95 right. session. Right. But yeah. I'm just saying, yes. given. That was the last election. Toward the end of your time. Yes. Um, and Democrat in Kansas House, Democrats lost 14 seats. I think they, uh, uh, that was a gubernatorial election. Uh, Graves was elected. Yes. Uh, Democrats lose two congressional seats. Uh, yes. Glickman and uh, Slattery. Yes. Um, uh, it was a Newt, weird, weird Newt weird. Gingrich at the national level is elevated. Uh, Bob Miller is deposed as in from his second run as speaker. Um, obviously, some turmoil going on politically. Did. Um, did you see these things developing? Uh, I'm thinking of the the abortion issue. I'm thinking of the emergence of uh, uh, the cokes in in uh, state politics. Did you no, see I, those things? Well, I, I I knew it. I knew it was changing. Uh, uh, say, first of all, uh, the '94 election was my toughest. Was what? My toughest, my hardest oh. election. There, uh, the primary. Uh, now, you would have been running in 92, no, or was it? No, 94, no. You, you would have 92, run, 92. You would have yeah, run in 92. 92, you, you were correct, yes. Yeah. Uh, that was my toughest, the hardest election that I had. In fact, the Saturday before the election, I was behind in the polls, and we had a a, a mass drop by, a, oh, I mean, lots and lots of people came from all over that helped. Uh, we flooded the district, uh, I mean, blanketed it, and I ended up winning. Which, the, what was the issue? The union. The, 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 my, opponent, my opponent was a, a union member of the uh, she was telephone, she was a telephone uh, employee. I don't know what that union is, but primarily it was the NEA and the uh, CIO and so on and so forth. And uh, they were, uh, like I said, uh, over the years I created a lot of baggage, you know, I, no question about that. I, I irritated some people. And uh, I, I, other than that, uh, I, I really don't know of any issue per se, except just generally. And. Uh, they, they, I don't know, maybe they sort of felt I didn't fund something well enough, and I know they didn't take education, but anyway, that's always a big issue. But uh, anyway, the, the, the uh, times were, were changing. Governor Graves won handily, and then he won two terms there. And uh, the, uh, uh, that, that, that's, that's where my wife changed politics, too. She, she, for Governor Graves' election there. And uh, uh, she 
you know, not, not because I said so, it was because she wanted to, and she also changed uh, religion, which not because cause we went to both, but anyway, uh, uh, she became Catholic, and she was buried in the Catholic Church. And so uh, the, the opposites did attract in that, in that case. But uh, as far as answering your question, I don't know any. So you would interpret the closeness as the response to your tight-fisted uh, yeah, budget? Yeah, that, that, that's what I, I think as far as the, my last election would be, yes. You're right, it was, it was, it was 92 and 96 would be my election, because I would be up for the election in 96. So it wasn't because you're a big spender? No. <laughs> well, I was, I was considered to be uh, tight-fisted and a conservative, ultra, maybe an ultra-conservative, and I think now I would be considered a flaming liberal, but I mean, that's a, it was the same. Well, how do you, uh, you know, we've had a governor for seven years that said everybody in the past spent too much money. Yeah, I, I, I disagree. Uh, I think uh, uh, we, we balanced the budget. And I remember one time, well, I guess it was in 80, 88, we, Nancy and I were in Hawaii, and uh, morning at, uh, we were in a hotel, and phone rang, and it was Governor Hayden, Governor Hayden's secretary there. She said, the governor wants to talk to you. He said, uh, we need you to come back. What do you mean? He said we need to allocate funds because the, we're going to be, the, by constitution, the governor must allocate if the budget oh. didn't, 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 get, didn't get balanced. So anyway, uh, I said, well, we're leaving the next day. There, you know, when, when do you get in? I don't know. I told him we get in at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that. He said, we have a meeting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon here in the, in the capital. So, Okay, we, we flew in, I got, got home, my trade clothes, got in the car, I came to Topeka, and we allocated funds in order to keep the budget balanced. There, and then, of course, when the session began, we, we made it law, I guess you might say, uh, passed the statute. But that was a call from the governor in Hawaii, and I, oh my goodness, <laughs> he, he traced us to, traced me to Hawaii. There. But anyway, it was uh, Bill Button's wife. Uh, it was his secretary. Yeah. I can't, I can't think of her name. There, anyway, uh, that's who called uh, in Hawaii. There, it was early morning over there here. It, uh, I don't know, was it six hours or whatever different. It was afternoon, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. it was. It was it, she, she got it. Got me out of bed. <clears throat> Did uh, while you were. In the legislature, did you uh, have any sense of the emergence of uh, Coke's uh, Coke industry? Yeah, uh, the uh, well, there's one of them, Westboro Baptist Church, Fred Fred Phelps. Uh, I I got an had an email from him just about every morning. I I'd say maybe every morning uh, through the week anyway, and it was a. It was an email that came to my office down down here that was, I think it was a copy of the one he sent to Governor Finney there. And, uh, and that, of course, that's not in here. I mean, that's out there. But in, in here, yeah, they, yes, they were beginning to to uh, coagulate or to get to get, get, get together kind of, I'd say, groups, maybe three, four, I mean, not, not huge. But yes, they were, they were, they were starting to do that. Yes. If it was Governor Finney, would that have been early or late in her term? Do you remember? I would say probably about midterm because I, I, I got those for quite a while. And my administrative assistant said, "Here's another thing from." from was it actually from the coats? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? Well, yeah, um, yeah, what was the message? They were very. Uh, Anti uh, Finney and anti government, anti just about everything. They're, yeah. they're anti whatever. Okay. And, yeah, the, 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 the popular message was just about everything and anything. Mm -hmm. 
did, uh, obviously, uh, uh, your Catholic. Yes. Did the abortion issue give you trouble at no. all? Uh, no, I could. I, I mean, I, I, I see some, some problems, and, and I, I think there's a place for an abortion, but I don't believe it ought to be just about, hey, come on in, you know. Um, Another disappointment I had is um, Menninger, one of the, uh, I don't know which, which Dr. Menninger came to visit, and Dr. Uh, the, the Congressman uh, uh, Roy, was his last name, uh, Bill Roy, visited me. They, they wanted ex tax exemption for a manager clinic. They took our Maria for a little do something. And I said, well, I mean, yeah, but you, you, you're you going to be here. Yeah, yeah. Next year they go to Baylor to uh, 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 Baylor University down in Texas. And I, 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 they're sitting in my office in the evening as after hours. And they're, we, they swore that they're, they're going to be here in Kansas, they're going to be part of Kansas, and so on and so forth. And boom, way to go. I said, you son of guns here. Here. We went out on a line and we bent over backwards to keep it because they were a, a, a benefit to, to Kansas. But then they skipped right after that. That I, I remember that too. Hmm. Um, you, in 95, you served as chair of, during the session as chair of Ways and Means. Yes. And then shortly thereafter, you stepped down before yes. the end of your term uh, to be chair yes. of Board, uh, Board, Board of Tax Appeals. Yes. Um, and you said earlier that was a hard decision. Yes, it was. How, how, how did that happen? I mean, well, I got to looking at my, my future. My engineering company, I, I was about to turn it over to my boy, to my two sons. And so I, what am I going to do? You know, I was getting up there in, a, in, in years, there, born in 1927. In 95, I would have been uh, 70. 68, maybe. I see, in 99, I would have been 70. Okay, so I was pushing 70 years old. So I said, what am I going to do? And, and so on and so forth. And I, did, I looked around in government to see what might, might be available. And there was an opening, I made an appointment available in the Board of Tax Appeals. And a few years earlier, well, it was back when uh, uh, Carlin was speaker, we amended a law that, that tied the salary of the Board of Tax Appeals to the judiciary, hmm. same as a judge. So I looked at that, and well, that's pretty good. And so I, I knew there was going to be an opening. There was an opening. In fact, it was already, already there. The governor had not made an appointment. There was, there was, there was an opening. So I, I went to the uh, governor's, um, uh, what was his name? Graves. No, Governor Graves, but I mean his, his administrator, assistant, a guy, guy uh, oh. Latino or something, well, anyway. Um, went to him and I said, is it possible, Governor, put me to that, to that thing? So we did some inquiries and everything, and he talked to me, and he said, yes, I, I'll put you there if you, if you want it. I well, I sure hate to do this. When I resigned, I... I felt real bad, I really did. They had a party for me and everything, but it was tough. And uh, I, uh, I re resigned in, in July of 95, which was after the session, session was done there. And uh, so I, I, re I resigned, and the governor appointed me chairman of the Board of Tax Appeals, and I was there four years, a four-year term. So I was there four years. And, uh, it was, it was nice, and uh, 
it uh, served me well because I had the boys and <coughs> sons took over the business. And they sold it after that, but anyway, that's, 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 that was up to them. There, and uh, I became chairman of the Board of Tax Appeals. That's when we moved to Topeka, because I had to live in, in Johnson County, to be in my district, of course. And we moved here in 96, September of 96. And I, so I started in July of 95. So uh, we were driving two cars. Nancy worked for, board of, for KDOT, Kansas Department of Transportation. And uh, I was with the Board of Tax Appeals, sometimes driving two cars. And so we decided not that's not good. So we found this, this house, and so we moved here to Topeka in September of 96. And I was on the board till 99. And uh, uh, then I got Did, retired. Um, the, was there something that you wanted to accomplish at the board, or? No, nah, not really. It, it, was, it was a stopping point. I mean, it, it, was, it was a pause between Senate and retirement. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was, it was a job. I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was, it was different. To, Highly different. We had to take a class in, in appraisal and the cost approach and so on and so forth in order to understand what you're talking about. So we took out for about a week class in appraisal of properties. And after that, I did some consulting work here, appealing some properties for some <laughs> individuals and with at, at the board of people with the Board of Tax Appeals. They're primarily, uh, I, I guess I won at the first level because they, they have a, a hearing officer and if you don't like the results of the hearing officer, you go before the board. And I think when I was consulting, I only went before the board once or twice. To, to, but then they call it the court. What they did, they, they changed it from the Board of Tax Appeals to the Court of Tax Appeals and the, they all had to be lawyers. Now they're back to the Board of Tax Appeals, and they don't have to all be lawyers. Anyway, anyway, they, uh, I appeared there once when they were all lawyers. That's different. But anyway, um, uh, I did some, but <coughs> primarily we, we stopped at the hearing officer level in the counties, in, in Wyandotte County, Johnson County, I think it did some in Osage County, along with consulting engineering work and painting the house and so on and so forth. And it was still a three member. It's still, it, it was a five member when I was on it. Oh, it was five. And five, and then it became a three member court, and now it's a three member board. Okay. But it was five when I was there. there. See, myself, Bob Fry, Representative, yeah, Representative Bob Fry. He was the senator. No, he, he was a representative. And Lynn Entricum, who was with uh, the legislative uh, staff, mm -hmm. she was she was an attorney. She was reading advisory statutes. She was an, an attorney. And she was on the board. See, the, 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 the three. Oh, and there was a, a retired judge from, from uh, uh, Western Kansas. That's four. See, there's one other. Anyway. Um, we've covered a lot of territory. I'm probably. I'm sorry. I mean, I got to rambling on. No, you're, you're you've been uh, specific and okay. uh, shown great uh, memory of of well, things. What? Um, it was a pleasant time in my life. Yeah. Um, what was it that made it work during that time? What What would you point to? Well, I would say. My opportunity of being in leadership position in the Chamber of Ways and Means Committee made it work. I mean, if it wasn't for that, uh, I don't know as I would have had that much of an interest in it. I, I, uh, I like to do things. I want to. I want to be active. I don't. I. I don't want to be proactive. I, I want to be active. And I think the Chairman of Ways and Means should be. I mean, I don't know if they are now. I don't have any idea. But should be active, and I tried to be active. I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be a decision maker, and I think that's that's probably what what did it. I if I would have uh, been quote sitting in the back row, and I don't mean that derogatory, 
I don't think I would have lasted that long. I don't think I would have stayed that long. I, 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 I don't think so. I mean, it, it, it's, it's too mundane for me. Were, were budgets as interesting in 95 as they were in 75? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, because I, 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 in 75 they were a challenge. Yeah. In 95 it was, I won't say routine, but it was getting that way, I guess you might say. And I, I, I think I probably knew more about the budget than most anyone. I don't know. I'm not going to say everyone, but most everyone. And so it would became more routine and mundane, yeah. But in, in 75 it was new. It was something new. It was something that uh, I didn't know anything about and I wanted to find out about it. And, so on and so forth. So I you knew mean, about budget because I had to have a budget in my office. You know, I mean, you, you, you all have a, you have a budget of some kind. You know, so. When you look at some of the governors you served with, uh, Bennett, Carlin, Hayden, uh, Finney, um, or leader, legislative leadership, uh, Senate or House, what stands out is special skills that uh, uh, made things work. I think Bob Talkington was, was a leader and he was an organizer and he was a, a um, uh, to get people to work together. I, I, I think he was, he was, he was very friendly of course and he was, he was outgoing and I was I played football against him. I didn't know it. He played for KU. And another one, I played football against Rex Hoy, which I didn't know. He played for Nebraska, Representative Hoy. Really? So he, he played for Nebraska the same time I did. And Talkington played for KU. But Talkington was on the Orange Bowl uh, team at KU there. And so I didn't know that, of course, at the time. He probably ran all over me. I don't remember that. <laughs> anyway, I, I think. Um, he was, I think, the, 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 bad, the best one of the lot. Where did you get your people skills? Uh, I don't think of it as an engineering school as a place well, for people I, skills. Well, I, I think maybe back growing up, I mean, we were, you know, we were out there in the country, we, we, we have to make friends or you're, you're going to be pretty lonely. And uh, the nearest, Oh, there was somebody, that was a half mile, no, there was somebody close from half mile. They didn't have any kids there, but so, I, I don't know, I guess back then, I, I uh, in high school, I was very shy and not outgoing, I mean, uh, gross. And I, 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 I woke up, I guess, at that case day to be, you have, you have to be more outgoing, you, you, there's people all over the place there, and so you have to be friendly. And, and then my first girlfriend was at K-State, and so on. Uh, there, uh, I still think about her. So, but anyway, that's uh, been a long time ago. Did and, you ever consider farming as a Yes, uh, as a when I got, got graduated, I didn't know. I interviewed for engineering jobs in Wichita. Chicago, I don't know, Arthur, quite a few places, and I had no offers, no job offers. That was pre-Korean War, which was kind of a down as far as, and I thought, well, I guess my grandpa said, you come home, you will, we'll, I'll, I'll set you up, I'll fix it, get you some equipment, so on, you go with your farm there. And I thought about it, and yeah, well, okay, I, I liked it, I mean, I liked it. But I thought, I, I got a degree in engineering. I'm going to farm. So I, I said, finally, I, 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 I don't remember how I came across this Department of Interior. So at that time, we had to take a test for government positions. So I took the test, and I didn't hear from him for a while. I thought, well, okay, I guess this was before I graduated. Right? So I guess I'm going to go home and be a farmer. Here. So I, I graduated, and I did, guess we went home, we went home for a couple, a couple of weeks, three, three, I don't know. Anyway, it wasn't much longer after that that I got this call from Department of Interior. But yes, I considered it 
uh, probably more serious than I thought right now, but yeah. <laughs> because I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't have a job, and I, all these interviews I had turned out to be, and I remember one in Enterprise, Kansas, I forget what the little company was there, but they, were, they wanted a design engineer. That's what my school was, mechanical design in, I mean, machine design in mechanical engineering. Machine design option to get mechanical engineering. How that, in my engineering career then, I, yes, obviously I've done some design pump stations or some hydraulics. So I did use a little bit of that mechanical engineering uh, in my civil engineering works. There, but very little. But yes, I, I did consider it. Yeah. That, and probably that if that Department of Interior had to come well, but then the Korean War started, I had job offers quite a few because the people were tooling up there. So I had some after that, but I was already working as an artist. You know, I'm not interested in those at all. Mm -hmm. I just put them in a wastebasket. I had several of them. I don't, don't remember how many, but I did job offers. But for a while there, yes, consider going to work for it. One thing that I kind of missed early on, how, did, how were you able to balance your consulting engineer work with the legislative work? Good staff there. And uh, I, I at uh, uh, payroll time, I used to go home and make payroll at night there. I'd go back to the office and make make payroll at night. I, I built the office in 68, I moved in in 69. I built it, I had a contractor, I hired the bricklayers, I hired the carpenters. We did all the trim, the painting inside, me and a couple of, couple of people there. So we had a, a nice office. But anyway, um, uh, i go home on, uh, and make sure that the payroll got built and did get done. We had, we had a secretary that would do it, but I'd go over them, make sure that they were all correct, because I wanted to make sure that people got paid what they were, what they were due. I didn't want to, and never wanted to short anybody, any, any of their salaries or wages or whatever they had coming to them. So I used to go back every, and I did that until in the 90s, there, during, during on payroll time, we used to pay twice a, twice a month. So it was mostly more than eight-hour days. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there, I, I, there, there were times when I, I, I had to attend meetings uh, uh, that, uh, consulting meetings, and I'd try to make those at night, but sometimes I'd have to skip, skip, skip morning and go there and then come back here for a session in the afternoon. I'd try to make those meetings that I had to have over there in the, in the mornings so that I could be in session in the afternoon. And then, of course, our, my committee meetings were in the morning, but I, had to, I just had to work around them. There. But I, I, I had good staff. I, as far as at the, back at that time, I was not doing all that much design myself. I was more of an administrator at that time. Okay. The, the, my design times were I did so, yeah, I did after session and so on, yes, I did. But I had other engineers to design, because go back in 74 to see who heard. I'm trying to think of engineers that I had. I probably had three when we had that uh, Iranian. Well, so, we've uh, covered a lot of territory. Is there anything we missed? Oh, I'm sure there is, <laughs> because first of all, I I was here a long time, <laughs> I uh, considering. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's others who've been here. Uh, Anthony Hensley's been here longer, and Paul uh, Paul Feliciano. But as far as cutting a swath, I think I I may sound boastful, but I think I cut a pretty wide swath you left when, your, I, when I was here. You yes. left your fingerprints on lots of things. I think I probably did. And uh, if some historian wants to come <laughs> and review it all, they'll have that. Okay. All right. But now they'll have you in person. Well, I don't, you know, maybe I've gone too far. I 
gone beyond what you wanted to not at discuss all. or something. Not at all. I, uh, if there's anything you want to add... Um, I, uh, I can't think of it. I, I uh, had an enjoyable time here. I really did. The, the first couple of years were kind of mundane and dull because I was, you know, freshman. Pete McGill was speaker. One thing I, I remember, the first bill I carried there, I was on local government committee in, in the House, and uh, they asked me, it was the TIF, Trans Tax Increment Financing Bill, and they said, I was in local, it was in local government committee, and they said, well, you want to carry the bill? I had never carried a bill before. I said, oh, shot you because I saw him, you know, up here. And I had an idea, so I, I okay. So I carried it, and I was explaining it, and everything got along pretty good. Towards the end, uh, Representative Don Maney, who was here, he got, put his light on and came up, and he said, why are you carrying this bill? Because he was inferring that I had an interest in it. And looking back at it, that's, there was a time I, why, I said, well, the speaker asked me to carry it. I mean, I, why, and that's why I'm, I have no other reason. He said, are you sure there's not another reason? I, well, I was flabbergasted. I, no, I, I don't know. Anyway, I, I remember that Don Manny's a nice guy, friend. He's a good friend. I mean, maybe a, he was a good friend. And I'm sure he was put up to do that by the Dems on the Democrats on his side to fluster me, which he did, because I I never carried one before. That's the first bill I ever carried. Of course, I carried many more after that. I mean, lots of. That's a fairly complicated bill, too. Isn't yes, it, it is. <laughs> and I, I don't know why the chairman didn't want to carry a chairman. I don't remember who the chairman was, but it was the local government committee. Yeah. But I sat next to Theo Cribbs from Wichita. Yeah. I remember we, I, we had a bill, something about rabbits. But he, he said, why are there no rabbits in Wichita anymore? Speaker's Reverend and Chairman said, oh, what do you mean? He said, there used to be lots of rabbits in Wichita. There are no rabbits there anymore. He said, I don't know. We, there was someone who was, I don't even remember what to build. They had to do with rabbits. But Theo wanted to know why there weren't any rabbits. You maybe remember Theo. <laughs> I do. Okay. Theo Cribbs, he, he, he sat next to me around the table that we had there. So it's been a long time ago. <laughs> that was it. That'd be my first year. 75. Well, Gus Bagina, you've given a wonderful interview. Oh, thank you. I want to thank you for oh. coming uh, today and spending Appreciate time it. with us. I welcome the, the opportunity. I really do. I, I like people. I really, really do. It. You're good people. You can, uh, after they get to set up at the Historical Society, you can uh, uh, tell your sons and grandkids uh, to look you up okay. and see what you had to say. All right. So. All right. Well, uh, yeah, the, uh, all years ago, one of them wanted to know, can we get this? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. So. You can, uh, you'll be able to get it all. Okay. All, all right. right. Very good. Ed, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've been terrific. Okay. <laughs>